Well, much of the talk pre-season has been about outwash and tyre wake and all of these aspects that are affecting the aerodynamics of F1 cars. But what I want to do is just step back and talk a bit more about the basics, about tyre wake uh, and how it works. So if we have a look at a very basic tyre in two-dimensional view here, you think about the airflow hitting this. Now, if we think of the airflow coming across here, it will go over and under the cylinder of the wheel and obviously as it comes over here you then start to get an area where the pressure is dropping you get high pressure ahead of the wheel low pressure behind and the airflow wants to separate away and you then get this classic flow where you have a separation bubble behind the tire and the airflow then reconnects much later so you're already getting turbulence here but this is almost too simplistic because there's two other factors that we've got on a formula one tire First of all, the direction. The wheel is rotating and you have a ground underneath it. So now when the airflow is hitting, the first airflow that's going over has the slightly rough surface of the tyre uh, to cope with it spinning in this direction. And it wants to separate even earlier than it did in the straight two-dimensional view. Then the airflow that's going under now has the ground plane to contend with so you get pressure build up here and the air has to have somewhere to go so that's the simple part of this now if we look at a wheel in three-dimensional view we can see exactly what's happening on a real formula one car so still the center line airflow that we saw here will go over and then that will then start to separate just over the crown of the tire and you then get the turbulence coming behind and the air that's going below the center line of the wheel now builds up a high pressure zone here. This is where it starts to get complicated. So if we think of the airflow that's now hitting the tire around this aspect of the tire, it wants to spill off and it then creates a vortex going like this. Likewise, air hitting here wants to spill off and again creates a vortex spinning down the side of the tire and that's the same on both sides of the tire. Now this lower vortex really is the problem because you have the high pressure zone and you have the ground plane which is constricting what you can do here. So these ones tend to be much stronger air flows and are affecting where the uh, air is going either side and therefore any aspect of aerodynamic bodywork near this is even more uh, affected by these particular vortices coming off each side of the tire. So if we drew where the front wing end plate is relative to the tire for 2019, so you have your end plate here and you would have your wing coming off like this. The airflow here on the wing is going to be coming and hitting this vortex. You want to try and placate this vortex here, but equally this vortex coming off the inner side of the tire is going exactly where the rear wing wants to be creating its downforce. So you have the underwing fences which try and straighten off the tyre squirting out, sorry, the airflow squirting out the side of the tyre here. Uh, so you can see all of a sudden what you're doing with the tyre and its airflow becomes really important because you have this really big wake that's being produced behind it from these four vortices and the separation bubble forming behind it. This is all adding drag to the tire. And as much as I drew nice, neat vortices here, this is really is an unsteady flow, much like when you put your hand out of the wheel of a tire, sorry, not out of a tire, out of a window. It doesn't always just stay at the same level in the wind. The wind is buffeting and you're getting this buffeting effect behind the tire here and the wake is moving around a lot. And if that then hits bodywork further down, particularly the diffuser and the rear wing, then you really start to have problems with the aerodynamics, which is why everyone talks so much about tire wake in Formula One.